Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to install the GNU compiler collection, more commonly referred to as GCC, on Mac OS. So to be able to follow along with this video, I just want to be clear up front that you're going to need a couple of things. The first thing you're going to need is an administrator account on the machine you're using. And the main reason you're going to need that is because during the installation process, you're going to have to enter that uh, account's password to be able to complete the installation. So just make sure you have an administrator account to be able to start. And the other thing you're going to need to know about the Mac you're using is the processor that came with that particular Mac. So uh, Apple ships Macs with uh, really two flavors of processor. Uh, the first is what is commonly referred to as Apple Silicon. So this would be like your M1, your M2 chips. Okay. Uh, the other kind is an Intel based processor. Right? And you're going to need to know that because it's going to change uh, the location of where things get installed. So uh, if you don't know that offhand, it's really easy to figure out. All you have to do is just come up here to the top left, click the little Apple icon, and that's going to bring this menu up, and then you can click on About This Mac. All right, and that'll bring this up and you'll notice right here it tells you it's like literally the very first thing it says processor and then it it'll tell you the kind of processor that is installed on that Mac right so for the purposes of this video I'm using an Intel based processor that's why you see it says Intel Core i7 so that's just letting me know that it's an Intel based processor if yours is a different kind of processor so one of the Apple silicons it'll likely say that right there and then you'll know all right so that's that's a simple way to figure that out all right, so the very first thing we're going to do now to actually start the installation is I'm actually just going to go over to the uh, Safari and I'm just going to open up a web browser. Um, and what I'm going to start us off with is installing not GCC directly, but I'm going to actually install a package management system. And the package manager that I'm going to use is called Homebrew. Now, Homebrew is an extremely popular package manager for Mac OS. I'm going to first install that onto this machine, and then after I do that, I'm going to use Homebrew to actually install GCC. So uh, when you get into your web browser, the very first thing you're going to do is just search for Homebrew. It's likely the very first thing that's going to pop up right here, Homebrew, the missing package manager for Mac OS, so just click on that. All right, and this is pretty simple uh, as far as installation goes. Um, all you have to do is just copy this little bit right here that's uh, highlighted. In fact, I'll try to make that a little bigger uh, so folks can see it. And we'll come over here. Yeah. So you're just going to take this part right here in the very center and you're going to copy that. You can highlight it like I'm doing right now, or you can just click this little icon and click that and it'll copy it to your clipboard. Once you have that, that's what you're going to use to then do the installation from the terminal. So uh, to get to the terminal, there's a, a lot of different ways you can do it. Uh, you can uh, come down here to the launch pad, open that up. And then once you're in the launch pad, you can come up here and just type terminal. And that'll, that'll select it for you. So I'll just go ahead and do that. And that's going to open this up. I'll make that a little bit bigger. Okay. And then once you're in the terminal, you're literally just going to come in here and you're going to paste what you got. So I'm going to hit paste. And that's going to put all of that stuff that I just got out of the homebrew web page into the terminal. Um, and that's really all you have to do. And then I'm going to hit enter. And now it's going to start the installation process. Now, this is what I was saying before. I have to have an administrative account to do the installation. So uh, it's prompting me for the password for the account. So I'm just going to type that in. And now it's going to go ahead and start the installation process. It's letting me know that it's going to install some uh, Xcode command line tools, which are pretty much a prerequisite for any kind of uh, development you're going to do on Mac. So I'm just going to hit enter and say, go ahead. And now it's going to continue the process. This is going to take a little while, so I'll go ahead and just fast forward until it's done. Okay, now that it's finished up, we can continue on in our process. So now that it's actually fully installed Homebrew on the computer, we can now use Homebrew to actually do the installation. Uh, before I jump into that, I'm going to just 
come back to this web page really quick and I wanted to just showcase what I was talking about earlier about knowing what chipset you're using because um, that actually uh, does change where uh, it installs things so if you click over here um, to the installation options if you just click on that it'll take you to this other page and this page actually highlights uh, the different places that it'll it'll put stuff. So it's letting let you know right now the Scripps installed Homebrew to its default uh, location is opt Homebrew for Apple Silicon and user local for Intel. Okay, so this is why I said it was important for you to actually know uh, which processor you're using because Homebrew will install things in different locations depending upon that processor. So since I know that I'm using an Intel based processor for this Mac, I know that Homebrew is going to install everything in this location. So that's just important for me to know because I'm going to need that later on in, this, in the process. But I wanted to let you know that that's where I got this information was on this page right here. Okay. So now let's going to go back over to the terminal. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and use Homebrew to install GCC by doing brew install GCC. And that's all I have to do. And I hit enter. Again, this is going to take a minute. So we're going to go ahead and just fast forward. Okay, so now that that's finished up, you can see that it has successfully installed everything for GCC onto the machine. So now the GNU compiler collection has been fully installed. This is great because now we can go ahead and just clear all the other stuff out of there. I can run it by just doing G++-13. Um, and then if I want to just make sure that it was installed correctly, I can just type the dash dash version. If you do that, you're going to get this message. And this is basically just confirmation that the GCC compiler was installed successfully. If that wasn't the case, you would be getting some other kind of message here. But since this is the message I'm getting, that lets me know everything came in just the way it was. If you weren't sure how I knew to type the 13 here, because this very well could be a different number depending on what the latest version of the G++ compiler is at the time that you're downloading it. So uh, the way I knew that was because after I installed it, I noticed that it said 13. But if you're ever confused and you're like, I'm not sure, uh, I didn't see that from Homebrew after I installed it, don't, don't worry, we can actually uh, figure it out fairly easily. Just go back over here to the page and again, note, uh, where things get installed for homebrew uh, depending on the processor. So uh, since I know that I'm using an Intel based uh, processor, this is where homebrew is going to put everything is in user local. So if I go back over to the terminal, I can just navigate to that location by doing CD USR local, right? And then if I take a look inside here by doing LS, I can see all of the stuff that's in that location and I want to go look in that bin directory right there. So I'm going to do CD bin, right? And then I'm going to do an LS again to just take a look of everything that's inside. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff here, but I'm going to scroll up a little bit and you're going to see all of the stuff related to uh, G++ all right here. So here's all that stuff. And you can note that the version of G++ that it installed is 13. So notice how there's a 13 by everything here. Right. So if you're using a, a newer version of the G++ compiler, it'll have whatever the version was that you installed through Homebrew listed right here. And that's how you'll know uh, which number to put after G++ when you want to actually run the compiler. Now, if you're like me and you don't want to have to type G++ 13 every time you want to do something, <laughs> um, and you would rather just do, or I'm sorry, G++ dash 13 <laughs> um, every time you want to actually do something then you you can actually create a symbolic link that'll make it so that when you run just g plus plus it'll work if you don't put the symbolic link in then and you just try to run g plus plus by itself you're going to notice something uh, kind of weird happen here i'm going to do that it's still going to say no input files just like this one did but you're going to notice that right here instead of saying g plus plus it's actually using clang or clang which is actually a completely different compiler um, and that's actually the default compiler that apple uses for um, a lot of its uh, internal development. So this is sort of the compiler that just comes out of the box as soon as you in install Xcode on your computer, uh, which is something that happened as a part of Homebrew uh, doing the installation. And so this isn't the compiler that um, I'm going to be using. And in my class, I, I always use the G++ compiler instead. So to kind of get around this, this 
problem since I, I would like to be able to use this to compile G++ instead of having every time I type G++ it actually doing Clang. I want it to actually do this command. Um, what I can do is just add a little symbolic link uh, that will help me out with that. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is now that I'm already navigated into the directory that I want to be in. So again, if I hit LS, you can tell this is the directory where all of those commands are living. So all, the, all those binaries are right here. See? Right. And if you're ever not sure exactly where you are on the computer system, you can actually also just do PWD. And that tells you this is where you are right now. Okay, so that's where I am. I'm in the user local bin. Right. And I would like to make it so that every time I type G++, it actually runs this command right here uh, instead of the one that it's uh, currently doing, which is going to Clang. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that just because I'm lazy. Right. And now I'm going to go ahead and create that symbolic link. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to type LN S. Right. And then I'm going to go ahead and just paste in that command. Paste. Okay, so I'm basically telling it uh, whenever you see uh, me type G++, so I'm going to do the, the command, this is where I'm telling it to go, right, this G++-13, and this is the command I'm telling it every time you see me do G++, do this instead, basically, right, and I'm going to hit enter, okay, now uh, that should have created the link, and in fact, if you hit ls now and, and list it all out again, um, you can scroll up here and you can see that there should be just one here for G++ now. Yep, that's a brand new one that wasn't there before, right? And this is a, a link that's actually going to tell me exactly uh, where uh, where to go. It's going to tell it to go here. The caveat, though, is that if I type G++ right now, it's still going to use Clang, and that's just because it doesn't take effect until the next session starts. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this terminal. Right. And I'm going to open another terminal, and, I'm, and that should be resolved now. Um, and actually, just to showcase that there are multiple ways you can get to the terminal, actually, I'm going to go ahead and use Spotlight this time. Last time I used the Launchpad. Uh, so you can get to Spotlight by hitting Command Space, uh, which is kind of the most typical way. Or you can hit this little uh, hourglass-looking thing up here in the this, and that will open it up. And if you go here, I can just hit Terminal, and that will open up the terminal as well. And I'll make that a little bigger again. All right, and now if I hit G++ now, now you'll notice when I do it, I actually get G++ now, right? And it's no longer using the Clang G++ compiler. Uh, it's it's using the one that I expect it to use. <laughs> actually, you can do uh, this now. You can do G++ version. And you can see that is exactly what it's doing. Is it's using the version that I want it to use. So now that you have the G++ compiler all set up, you're ready to go. As a last little thing I will note about how we did this installation is that um, now that we have Homebrew installed on this computer, I used it of course to install GCC, but you could totally use Homebrew to install any number of applications or tools that you want. Like I said before, it's an extremely popular package manager for Mac OS. So uh, feel free to investigate that further. If there's other tools or utilities that you want to put on your, uh, your Mac, this is a great way to do it. All right. Well, thanks for watching and uh, have a good one.